Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk you through the process of how I create my pan pastel backgrounds. Um, the main subject of this particular um, piece is a horse, obviously, you can see. And this, the actual animal himself, itself is going to be in coloured pants, so it's going to keep be quite detailed, but I want the background to be very soft and sort of smoky looking with lots of different colours. And pan pastels lend themselves perfectly to these sorts of backgrounds. They're relatively quick to apply, um, very, very blendable and really create the look I'm after. So pan pastels, if you haven't come across them before, are basically pastels in a pan. Look a bit like very large eyeshadow compacts. They're very finely milled um, and very soft and smooth, so, so very, very blendable and you apply them with these um, soft tools. There are other things you can use to apply them, but these are the things that are actually recommended for them. They're a plastic handle with little high density foam covers that go over the end that um, you can replace when they get worn or full of pigment. So to begin with, I'm just gonna start by creating the base layer at the top half of the horse. I actually have just drawn over the outline of the animal um, with a dark grey coloured pencil. I normally just use graphite trace down so it's very faint, but it wasn't showing up on the video. So I've just sort of increased the, the detail a little bit more so it's easier for you to see. And I want to show how I work around the edges of the horse um, without going over the edges and without creating a halo effect. Now it is possible to use masking film to cover your main subject, um, the, the I think it's Frisk by Frisk, the one that you would normally um, associate with airbrush work. So if you feel more comfortable doing that, that makes it a little bit quicker because you don't have to worry too much about being neat around the edges. But I'm quite happy just to go and do it this way. So I'll just show you what I do. Just to start with, I'm just going to apply a base layer. So it's not going to look very blended to begin with. And I'm just going to sort of block in various colours in the places I want them and then I'll work through on top. So to apply the um, pan pastels, you want to make sure that, basically I'll angle it so you can see it properly, you have your soft tool parallel to the surface of your pan pastel and you just sweep it across a couple of times to pick up your pigment. What you don't want to do is sort of jab and prod, go that way, Prod your um, soft tool into the pastel because you'll break up the surface and you'll also cause the end of the foam to deteriorate as well because you're just putting a bit too much pressure and the inner piece of plastic will push on the foam covering from the inside and help to break it down. So when you actually start to apply it to your pastel mat, again the same thing to begin with, you want to make sure it's level on this first layer and you almost sort of, you dab it, pat it on. With pastel we expect to be able to just do big sweeps to start with and you can but only once you've filled a little bit of the tooth of the paper. So I'm just going to start working this across. Okay and it's creating quite a flat layer at the moment but you can still see a little bit of the um, grey of the pastel mat behind it and that's fine. And I've just sort of mocked up in Photoshop how I want the colours to look but at this stage it's not, I don't need to be massively accurate and anyway it's a very loose sort of smoky background so there's no real um, absolutes. I think um, people get frustrated with hands on um, pastel mat because they're not soft and silky feeling right from the get-go. So I'm just working up to the edges of the horse. So I'm not worrying too much about whether it's a perfect line at the moment. Let's see, once I want to get um, more accurate then I would just sort of use the tip only very lightly and only around the absolute edge. You can be pretty accurate with your detail here. Just want to fill in a little bit of the teeth of the paper. And 
And I tend to start with my darker colours and add the lighters on top. I just found that works a little bit better for me. We'll switch colours soon. I'm just... So you just pat them in. And as you can see, um, the pans really don't create very much dust. One of the things that people get wrong um, and find they have a lot of dust is they scrub the soft tool across the surface of the pan pastel to loosen the pigment before applying it. And then you can get very messy. And there's no need to do that. You actually, it's actually working against you. You start to do that. So this is sort of a dark turquoise colour. So I'm not intending this as a, you know, as a tutorial to copy this exactly. This is more about just this is the technique I use um, for, pas for pan pastels. And just wanted to share some of those techniques. Again, just aligning it there. And if you go over the edge, you can just erase um, the pan pastel. This is just a Tombow mono eraser. So it's like a plastic eraser in a but very detailed. So you just sort of can see there. And if you don't go overly heavy with your um, pan pastel, you can work with your colour pencil on top. I'm just tidying up a little bit. Oops. And then to get rid of your little bits of rubber, you can just dab a bit of Scotch Magic tape or any low tack tape and it just picks it up rather than trying to brush it off and smudging your work. So I'm just going to keep applying. What I will do, um, once I've explained a certain amount of technique, then I'll just speed the video up a little bit so you can see where I'm applying the colours and then I'll slow it down again when I want to add some more information. So I'm just going to swap colours now. So between colours as well, I always have um, alongside a keep, it's just basic cheapy old kitchen towel and I just wipe, let's see, very quickly you take the pigment off, wipe your soft tool over the kitchen towel before applying to a new colour. Yeah. And then um, you don't contaminate the pan. Again, just pushing that pigment in and remembering to load. I think another reason these break down is when people um, don't have enough pigment on there. So using the soft tool as a blending tool rather than as an applicator and it very quickly causes the foam to deteriorate. And they're not cheap if you're, if you're having to get through three or four each drawing. I've already used this particular one on another drawing, so um, I'm not expecting it to last that much longer. Again, I'm not being super accurate with where exactly the colours are going because that can be adjusted but I am being careful when I just um, apply around the actual horse. And this is one of the reasons why I like to put my backgrounds, if I'm doing one of these colourful backgrounds, I like to do them first because you can go right up to the edges of your drawing. Um, you don't worry about covering any any coloured pencil that you put down. There we go, I'm just patting that in. I love this colour. It's one of my favourite ones. It pops up in a lot of my drawings. I'm very drawn to using it. And the same colour is going to be over this side here. You see, you can be really, really accurate with your lines. There we go. 
and have a lot of fun with this sort of work. I'm just going to take this all the way out to the edge. Again, I keep putting, making sure I'm putting pigment on my soft tool. I'm not just expecting to, at this stage anyway, I'm not expecting to drag the pigment around on the paper. So though it doesn't feel massively rough, there's an awful lot of texture in um, pastel mat. And it really grips, which is what is great about it, because you can get an awful lot of colour down. But it also is quite tough on um, soft tools, if you don't use them as effectively as you could. There we go. Gonna have a little bit more blue up there. So this isn't gonna be how it's gonna look in the oh, just gone over my edge there. But that's fine. As I said, you can just tidy those edges up. And it really you can see as well it's little bits of dust, but nothing like um, using your more traditional pastels. That's one I used to work quite a lot in pastel and it was one of the things that um, put me off because you just got so messy, or I did anyway. There we go. Take that out. Again, this first layer doesn't have to be the little bits. Perfect. It just um, that's what colour is. We're just getting a base down. I want some red iron oxide, I think. Rich red up there, and this colour is going to be watered down quite a bit. So some of the colours do break up a little bit more than others, um, and it's just a matter of working with that. You can just blow the dust off or blend it in. So again, I'm not worrying about. Um, the actual blend yet. Just want to get some pigment down on the paper. And this will actually be a lot more muted once I've finished. Move some more of that through there. I just want that colours down and I want some more of this up here actually. Can be difficult when you're sort of looking at, at work that you admire to really work out the process behind the finished piece and often highly detailed work um, makes us think that we should be highly detailed right from the start when we're working on it when actually um, actually those initial layers pretty crude maybe but certainly not hyper detailed that detail that you see is just the final layer and that's why you know you get people talking about the ugly stage and that's why you sort of I can look at that and think and have not have that bother me at all because I know how it's going to work as I progress I know I'm just putting pigment down just dotting bits about. There we go. I'll we'll just put a little bit. Oops. This is light Payne's grey. Ah, I made a mistake there. Didn't wipe off my um, soft tool before I switch colours but it doesn't matter you can just work over the top of it actually it's got quite a nice pinky brown there doesn't look too bad at all we're getting more of a pure blue There we go. Look at 
carefully around the edge. Again, you can just tidy it up if need be. If I wanted something to be really, really white, then I would have a clean um, soft tool cover. So you had no risk of contamination. But for this, actually, that's that sort of mix of a little bit of pinky brown in there is absolutely fine. I'm not worried about that at all. And this part here, just go, just move it up slightly. There we go. Whee! <laughs> Is actually where the hair is going to come out from the tail but because it's going to be very fine I'm just going to work over the top a bit and then I can put the pencil on top okay and just going to now adding the base layer down and then I will talk to you um, about the next layers and how I get it really looking I want it to do. Just wanted to chat a little bit about what I'm doing around the horse's legs because they're quite finicky. Um, I actually switched to the triangular soft tool and I am just using a tiny bit of pigment on the end and just really, really lightly um, applying the pigment to the pastel mat around the edges. So I'm taking quite a lot of care. So this section is where we can take the longest and then if I go over my edges I'm just tidying them up with my mono eraser and I don't tend to wait to the end to do a big tidy up if I'm going to erase things in this way as I see it I do it and I think find that a little bit easier it makes it um, less to clean up in one go and I think just generally to look a little bit smoother. So I want the pastel to be right up to the edges of the lines. I don't want it to fade out as it approaches the edges of the horse. Like I said, again, it's one of the reasons that I like to do these backgrounds first. So I've already got a good idea of how I want my actual image to look in the end. So it's not like I'm going to do the horse and then think, oh, what sort of background should I put on? I've planned that all out um, beforehand. You can see because I'm just using the edge, I'm actually creating a little bit more dust. And that's fine. It's just around these edges and I'll switch back to a bigger tool, be more quick, quicker rather. 
that's better. Also, I wanted to say about in the actual drawing, there's quite a large shadow under the horse. And I'm going to add that on top of the pastel um, in coloured pencil when I get there. So for now, I'm just going to cover it with this raw umber, dark umber, no, raw umber, extra dark. And then I'll add that shadow back in at a later stage. Just so it connects the shadow with the horse because the, the look will be the same. Um, I won't put a huge amount. Of, I will cover it with a little bit of pastel. But I won't put a huge amount down there. And also, I only want a light layer of this because it's. I don't want it to be too dark underneath the horse's legs. I want light to shine through, and I'll go through that in a little while when I do a bit more of the next layer. I just want that to show there. Well, hopefully, this gives you an idea of what happens before the bit that you actually end up seeing. I do get a lot of questions about my background. Um, so hopefully this will help answer a few. See that I've just pretty much blocked in. I'll just go on the hoops here. Okay, I'm going to swap back to my, excuse me, larger soft tool and carry on as I was before. Okay, I've now got to the stage that I have got colour over the whole of the horse. So I'll just um, over the background rather. I'll just slide them up and down. You can see. Okay. Obviously, as you can see, it looks pretty rough at the moment. So it'd be very easy to get frustrated at this point and feel that it's not working. Those aren't for you. You need to find another way of working, but this is just your base. So all you've done is block some colours in, sort of in the areas that you want them to be, your finished piece. So now this is when it starts to get a little bit more fun and look a little bit better. So I have got another shaped soft tool. This one's got a round end. It's just quite good for getting down um, big chunks of colour. 
and I'm going to start to work a little bit more on how I want to look at the end. So again, I'm going to start with the darker colours and start to put them in. Already, now you're putting a second layer in, it's feeling so much smoother than that first initial layer. Starting to lose any um, lose the sight of the grey pastel mat. Sorry, I'm concentrating and not speaking. <laughs> so I'm just blocking in. Where do I want turquoise? So I want little hints of this red, red oxide, but not too much. So I'm going to cover it with the turquoise. Dark turquoise. Again, remember to apply your pigment. It's easy to just keep scrubbing away with your soft tool. Not working. Once you've got a really accurate line yeah, um, around your animal, your subject, relatively easy to keep it intact. Just smudged over there a little bit. Again, if you do that sort of thing, you just pop around with your Tombow razor and and you don't need to cover everything. Like here, I'm just starting to um, leave little bits of the underneath showing. So it becomes a real sort of mishmash of colour. Got some stronger turquoise there. What's that? I tend to so I it before, but I tend to build the darker colours first and then put the lights on top, um, which is a more traditional way of working with pastel, but you don't have to do that. Um, you can play around a little. It's very very forgiving and very flexible. Some of the darker turquoise. If I just need to go up to the edge, just use the edge of my soft tool. Just to cover in. And then to softly blend it through. Okay. Just covering it and just dragging it out just to little hints of the darker colour without too much. A little bit more there. A bit pinky. Just on that pink. You can see there how it's starting now. You can start to blend them in a way that you might um more expect to have happened with pastel. Actually, we have to move the pigment over a larger surface. It's just that initial layer. You've just got to be a little bit patient. Oops. See there, I've picked up. Oh, it's actually okay. You get happy accidents as well. I sort of work out how I want it to look, mock it up a little bit in Photoshop. Um, just cut out the layer, move the layer of background behind the horse from where I took the photo, just trees and things, um, and then just play with different colours behind just to get an idea of what I want it to be. And it's not a hard and fast rule, it's just a guide, just to give me a quick, okay, so turquoise there would look good. It's time to get so it's a real murky colour here, but we'll brighten it later. Some more turquoise coming in around there. It really is you just start to have fun with it. I love doing these backgrounds. But equally I love doing the actual detail of the horse. I have sort of what thing the pans, but I haven't quite given up my love of that real extreme detail. Just gonna dab a little bit in there. So I really want to create a really strong dramatic background. This horse is such a strong image when you've got the flowing tail and things coming out behind 
a bit of dark turquoise across here. And just tap them in. So once that first layer is down and you've been really accurate, you don't need to be quite so precise with your second layers uh, and fourth layers. The pigment almost seems to follow the line that's already down there, if that makes sense. Blow the dust, and of course, you can just go and tidy it up. By the time I sort of finish a layer, I go around and do some tidying. I'm probably going to come across here with some much brighter turquoise, but I just want to lighten that. So that red is just going to be a hint just to balance with the reds in his coat when I get to that point. So you can follow your reference exactly or you can go a little bit off piste and do your own thing. It really is up to you how you like to do this. Okay, so that's my turquoise. Oops, I think I'll be doing quite that bit. There, I think that came off. I didn't show, did it? I didn't move it up. There. So already starting to look more um, complete, much softer. There, galloping out of something towards you. Up top again. There we go. So if I go much further away with my lens, then it becomes a little bit too small. So I'm just going to move them around. Okay, so then back to my darkest colour, the little umber. Just want a little touch of this. And the top again. And then I'm going to go back down to the bottom, smooth them up. You can see this time I chop them off. Oops. Come down. There we go. Just want that corner there. Look really deep. And if when you finish your main subject, if you you know if you choose to do it this way and do your background first, there's nothing to stop you going back in, adding a few dark areas or light areas if you feel that's what it needs to really sort of bring your animal to life. Remember, I'm going to put an actual shadow in here in coloured pencil because there's lots of bits of earth flying up so I think coloured pencil will be the ideal tool for the job so that's why it looks a little bit lighter underneath oops don't do that that's me looking in the wrong direction when I did it so again if you do smudge or go over which is that's a deliberate error there just to show <laughs> You can just go around your edges when you're doing um, work, just go in your edges and erase any wobbles with your pan pastel. And this is where if you want to um, use a mask, a frisk, it can speed things up because you literally can just go over the top of the masked area so you're not worrying about um yeah not worrying about going around the edges you just go for it and just um find them cutting the mask a little bit fiddly so i don't really bother well, i have done it before and it does work very well Okay, 
Now I'm just getting a little bit of Scotch magic tape and just pick up the little loose pieces of rubber and pastel. Find if you because the pastel has so much grip to it, you can't just blow them off. And if you brush them, you're going to smudge the pastel. So lifting them off, I found to be the quickest, less destructive way of actually removing it all. So I tend to do it as I go rather than wait to the end and have a big clear up. And I found that works better because you're only having to do little bits at a time rather than um, masses. And also the more pigment goes on, the deeper it goes into the tooth and therefore the harder it is to get out. So just if you see a messy spot, just tidy up as you see it. Ooh, oh. Oh, Again, it's very forgiving if it doesn't go quite right. Just Put more on top, right? Go back to the top again. There we go. Now I'm going to have a little play with the brighter turquoise, pure turquoise. It's a lovely color. So I've gone back to my oval for this one, so a little bit more precision. I've just swapped, taken the um, foam cover off and swapped it so I've got the cleaner edge underneath. Just want this to be a real pure color. So I'm just gonna. A little bit. See, it's really getting so much more blendable now that there's more um, pigment on the paper. Just pop a little bit up there. So the whole set of um, pan pastels is about 80 color. There are 80 colors in the colored part. You can get like pearlescents and things, but I haven't got those. So I do have the full 80, but you really don't need to um, buy the whole lot. I would sort of, with, I think I started with just getting probably like four or five sort of blues and greens because I was mainly using them for animal backgrounds. And then every time I did a paper order or a pencil order, I'd add another couple too. And um, managed to get, a very useful set of probably I had about 25 I think and that was probably absolutely adequate and I only ended up getting the full set because it was on offer I can't leave it on the shelf price although I'm very glad I have got the full set they are beautiful to look at <laughs> but I don't tend to use all of them it's certainly not needed they're so blendable you really can just so you just keep applying on that pure colour on top. And the frame I've got for this piece is quite a nice dark chocolatey brown. So having that blue to contrast with that will look really good. Oops. Just blend little bits through because it's obviously not a natural looking background but equally it needs to be believable so it's coming out of something as opposed to just stuck on a piece of wallpaper or something if that makes sense so where the colors are where the light and shade is all sort of has that um, feeling of being um, not real but believable that's the word isn't it believe we'll stick with that one just blend this see they're so blendable so blendable it's, they're beautiful to work with I really do enjoy working with these so you're ready he's really looking like he's starting to um, galloping towards you. I'm just using it to sort of brighten areas. I'm just going to tidy that ear up while I see it. We smooched it. There we go. 
I think if you keep your neat, the bits you need clean, you're less likely to keep going over the top, otherwise it's very easy to lose your shape. This forelock is all wild and flowing, so um, his mane back. So once the actual hairs are in place, it'll make more sense. And I think that's another reason why I like these backgrounds in first, is that you can draw all your hair um, out over the pastel rather than trying to draw around it. Although you could, you know, you could do your pastel second and then finish with a few hairs, but I just find it easier to do it in one go. And if you don't want to move your pen pastel around too much, that's when I don't tend to use my fingers much, but you can almost like push the pigment into the texture and then it doesn't move it around then it just keeps it in place if you want particularly um, for areas to stay really pure in colour with a bright colour like this then that works really well. Just want to lift a little bit through here. Yeah, so to do this, I mean, this isn't possible to do in coloured pencil, but it would take an awful lot longer to build up. You know, you'd need several layers and some very um, competent technical skills with your pencils to get this softness. It absolutely is possible, but for me, there's something about soft layers that are pretty unique in pan pastel. Just a little bit coming in there. So I want to avoid any area looking really too solid, even if it's just a little hint of other colour coming through. Just um, picking up. So what you can do as well, I'm picking up dark colour from the actual pan pastel, it's the paper itself. So just every now and again, just wipe off your um, soft tool, your kitchen towel. Starting to, to the end because I want to, I've got colours to go on top. Starting to look far more how I'm envisaging it for the end. So I'm put a bit of pure down here. Looks like his eye, and I just haven't been too careful. Okay. okay, I've just moved it down a little bit. Just going to start to work on the lower half. So you don't need a, it's going to get less turquoise as I go down, but I still want little bits of it showing through. Just so it looks really harmonious and gorgeous. Bit through here. Oh, and because I'm just thinking maybe much, but no, actually, just keep blending, blending, blending. Just keep getting through there a little bit of. So I mock up, but as to actually where I put it when I'm finally drawing, it really is just um, what I think looks better. I'm trying to keep it harmonised and gorgeous, hopefully gorgeous. And if you're your work, you know, there's um, quite a few animals I've done, or horses rather. Look 
so nice actually I've always wanted to be able to create I love realism but I like it but I don't want it to look like I like having other elements in there I, you know I like anato anatomically I want the animals to be correct and I want them to look alive but I love having um, other elements in there and I think these background having the backgrounds like this with a really realistic looking horse I think Maybe with a, playing with a few colours within the horse. This really suits me down to the ground. And I sort of had these ideas for a long, long time, but didn't have the materials to quite create them. I used to try and create these sort of backgrounds in watercolour. Never quite had the same effect. That's not looking watercolour. It can look absolutely amazing as well. But it wasn't quite what I was after. Just going to bring a little bit down here just to lighten it without um, really changing the colour too much. Okay. So yeah, as to why, you know, fiddling away with it, it really is just experience and that's your choices. So there's no rule book to follow. It's just a matter of having fun with them. I'm just going to swipe off some pigment. Put that in there. So that bit right by his face. Is. This guy was called Gus, by the way. <gasps> Gorgeous stallion. Obviously, he has a posh name, but he's known as Gus. <laughs> a really strong turquoisey colour. Okay, I think counter it with equally bright, just on the opposite side. See, you just need to remember to keep dipping back to your pan pastel. It's easy to get robotic and just keep scrubbing away at them, but really notice what's happening underneath your tools. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to uh, wipe off pigment but here this is the light Payne's grey Payne's grey tint I think it's called yeah Payne's grey tint almost white the grey this one's broken up quite a bit as it's I'm using um, through it but this is where I'm going to add some lighter colour in just to lighten everything and really stink this up to blend. You can see how effectively the lighter colours do go over darker. So if I wanted a really, really white, pure white area, I probably I wouldn't actually have any other colour underneath it. Um, just because they're not a hundred percent opaque. You just want, um, if you want that purity, but just about seeing those other colours through it, blending them all together. Just playing with it, really. It's fun. It should be. And don't be afraid to experiment, you know. Uh, it's a... Uh, Art is so subjective. Learn your techniques or get as many techniques as you can to help you know your tools. Then it really is about having fun. I don't quite doesn't doesn't feel like that. Things aren't going quite to plan. Okay. 
it's way over this side just to balance it slightly. And equally, if you get to a point and you just can't figure out what's not working or isn't, just put it down, put it to one side, go and have a cup of tea, walk the dog, do something that um, really takes your mind off it. And normally when you come back, what's missing or what needs to be done will jump out at you. So we get so we can't see the wood sometimes. And I have learnt the hard way that if I'm getting frustrated just to stop, I'm trying to rush something just to stop because I'll end up just scribbling on it or doing something that really does um, not help. <laughs> some pigment off there so I don't want any more pigment on there I just want that to blend in and lighten it without it looking white so you can all if you overdo it you can always just add some more color on top and just let it Let's a little bit through there We'll make sure what's happening behind the horse has some sort of consistency. It's not just um, jumping out of nowhere. Yeah. really smooshy and I so say I'm going to have a black shadow um, underneath it all I just think I want to take a little bit more white across there I'm just going to come down and um, have a look at the top again Whee! there you go Add some lighter bits up in here. So that brown is now taking the most of almost pinky effect that I was hoping for, which is good. And like when you're mixing paint, if you're not sure about the colours, just experiment on a piece of paper before applying them to your um, work so you don't end up with any unexpectedly odd looking colour changes. Just going to put a bit through there. It's having bits just poking through. Look, having a bit more white up this area. So under his ear, very good as well. Like so, yeah, that's looking how it should. And then you can go in and put a bit more turquoise on top if you want, or build up your darks again. It really is personal taste. How you want these to look. Bring that down. Yeah. It's actually worked better than I thought it was going to do for this colour in particular, which is always good.
clean off that again. Sometimes you'll say, I think you finished, go away, come back, and then think, oh no, still needs a little bit more work. Money goes there. looking how I wanted it. This is really good. So hopefully I've done the horse it will be exactly as I wanted it. So I'm just softening it over. Is there anything I'm not sure about? I think that's a bit too white there. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of dark turquoise move him up slightly so in the middle little dark turquoise in there just to so you've got a few little white bits but not completely yeah that's better that's better and then just a few more dark turquoisey bits up here just to break that bit up feel the more as you get more pigment in the paper how much more easily it all works together I want some dark up here and then maybe we come down again a little bit so you can see properly I need to work at a bigger scale so we go There we go. I'm just sort of scumbling with the um, soft tool. Just uh, then you can pat it in. And obviously the different shape tools make different marks. So um, you can use that if you want. And also the beauty about pastel mats, you don't need to use any fixer tips on them. Blow the loose stuff off. And, um, good. and then there's a final thing for now. I may come back and tweak it once I've actually done my horse. So I'm just grabbing my turquoise again. And I'm just adding a few more bits around here. Putting some of that pure in, over the top of the lighter areas. Just dabbing it on, patting it on now almost. There we go. Pushing that pigment into the paper. And then I get my, that's a dirty finger, so clean finger, really just push it in. Really can help. In there. So 
so it's getting there really close just going to pop back to my um just want the dark turquoise around the ear sounds better so as to why i sort of think oh, that needs it there it's it's just experience and um your own taste really i'm just going to come back up to it again just have a little add a few more little bits of dark turquoise in the ground pack them on just to break up solid color and really help it look harmonious throughout Again, I'll be putting the um, shadow in in coloured pencil. So the only thing I'm not really at that quite right yet is um, just something about this middle area here. I kind of don't know. Back to my lighter colour. Just want to get rid of that dark splodge there. That's it. Doesn't that work too well? I think I need something on this side to balance it. Even though I got rid of it before, I think it still does actually need. Oops, gone over my lines there. So even just a tiny little touch of it can make a difference. And I hope you get from this as well, as much as there are um, ways of applying things that work with the properties of your medium, as far as creating your art, it really is your choice. If you like it, that's good enough. I just think some lighter there around here would just draw the eye towards his head. said if once you've actually finished your main subject you feel that you need a little bit more oh, it's going to be really dark here so make it lighter so it really stands out getting there so i think this is working better maybe just a bit more Let's see i feel like this for hours <laughs> Turquoise up there, that's better. And I'm also at the point now where I just need to stop and go and do something else and then come back to it, and it will let me know if there's any more I need to do. And also, you know, taking a photo of your work can sometimes get things jumping out, holding it up in a mirror can also be really good for showing you. I just think I'm going to have to be turquoise up there. Um, if things aren't quite right. Line, should have a line. Maybe just a couple of little spots of bright stuff down here. Just really subtle. Just to blend it all in. Just so some of this as well. Just tapping really small amounts on. So there, but not massively there. It's quite easy to sometimes overblend. When you end up a big swooshy mess of colour. Um, and I like having the different shape differences between the different colours. Getting there. Just gone a little bit dark umber around here just to just gonna blend it in, but I just want a darker brown there. See, I'm going backwards and forwards with it. Also, have to remember that there is going to be hairs coming out over it and what have you. So, I actually, think 
it in that way. For now, this is as far as I'm going to go because if I do any more, um, I think I'm going to overwork it and I need to give my eyes a break. Just tidy up right around here on my edges. I've gone over. Um, go do something else and then come back to it. Getting fresh and enthused. I'm not someone who can sit at my art for hours. Um, partly when it gets all back and all rise. But I need that little break. Um, and it also allows me thinking time. So, for example, I've got a very large commission to do next of um, snow leopards, actually. And although I haven't actually started it, it's in the thinking process. I'm already sort of planning how I'm going to approach it. I don't just throw um, my pencils and pastels at my paper and hope. I do actually think quite hard about what I'm going to do first. Um, also known as procrastinating, but it's actually very useful. <laughs> Okay, so that just tidies up these edges. Of course, because the horse is very dark, you'll be able to work over the very edges as well. But it just um, gives you a helping hand and then go around with your magic tape or low tack tape and just pick up little bits of rubber as they come loose. Pastely filled. Oops. I don't know what I do with that Scotch Magic Tape. It really does fulfil many, many purposes. <laughs> so it's also what I've used to um, tape my um, pastel mat to the board. I have an easel, but I also have, I tape my work to a board so I can move it around, up and down, sort of change it, change the orientation very easily rather than having it taped to an actual static board where you can't move it. I find this the best way and it's relatively robust. If I need to pick it up and take it off the board and do something else quickly, then I can do that. Okay. So hopefully that helps you and gives you a bit of an idea how I create these backgrounds. Do the snoop again, there we go, whole thing. It gives you a little bit of an insight into pan pastels, um, how I use them anyway. They're obviously, we all have our own little ways of, just put a little edge in there. We all have our own way of doing. But if you like what I do, this is how I do it. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I will be back soon and I will video the actual horse as well. Bye bye.